Yo, 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 what's up everybody? Thank you for tuning in to yet again, another fantastic indie creator interview. It is your Caped Crusader, Cody, and we are keeping it geekly with our brand new friend, Chad Perkins of Blue Lullaby. How are you doing, my man? Uh, Dude. Welcome to the show, dude. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm doing really well. My wife and I just celebrated our sixth year of marriage yesterday. Um, so we had a whole day to ourselves. We went to a nice dinner. Uh, we went to the zoo. I got her a PS5 because I'm Dude, amazing. No, let's I, go. Oh. I got lucky. I got lucky. No, but other than that, I'm doing good. Um, it's nice to have a three-day weekend, you know? So what's the first game you're looking forward to playing on the PS5? Oh, God. Uh, well, she just, I got her a bunch. So I, we went to GameStop. She picked out a bunch. I got Ghostwire, which looks like a weird it, horror badass. action game. Is it good? So we were talking earlier because uh, you guys do a podcast, which we'll talk about. We'll, we'll you know, we'll give a shout out to that as well. Uh, but like for me as a Twitch streamer, I uh, my biggest my gimmick is I play AAA titles when they drop. So sure. like Ghostwire, I played right when it dropped. Uh, Horizon Forbidden West. We did uh, Dying Light Two, like all that Elden Ring. Although I got clapped pretty hard on Elden Ring, I was doing like a Ooga Booga build with two great swords, and like <laughs> it was not boding well for me. No, uh, my wife actually she beat Elden Ring three times now um she loves Let's that game go, she's, dude. she has way more patience with me than me when it comes <laughs> to like dark souls and bloodborne and eldering i die once and i'm like man dude so i gotta ask you i gotta ask you before we dive into anything what was what's your biggest tip uh for a healthy marriage six years is a big number that i you know i got three kids and none none of the relationships lasted with any other moms like whew. Ooh. Ooh. Um, I need I, the juice. I, 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 I need the help, please. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes. Here, take notes, young Padawan. Um, so my wife and I have been together since we were 19, but we knew each other back when we were in elementary school. Ooh, let's um, go. I should also clarify, we were both in elementary school. Um, that, that is a big, a big, <laughs> Chris Hansen like was like, all right, we're going to hang up now. We're going now. Um, but I, honestly, the easiest way to a healthy marriage is legitimately communication. Mm -hmm. um, know when to have the hard talks and just be very open minded and patient with each other. Um, she puts up with, I mean, you could probably see from my studio, this isn't all the books that I own, but she puts up with my huge unhealthy ha ha uh, obsession with comic books. I was going to um, say, it looks like a room rich with uh, mahogany leather bound books, mm -hmm. uh, many books. And I, yeah, I know, uh, man, that is, communication is, is, is big. Like with me and my significant other, we've been together for three years. So we're, we're getting there. That's, you know, doing good so far. Uh, it's, it seems like when there's no kid added in the in equation, you know, it's doing a lot better. Sure. Uh, but it's uh, for me, it's like also making time. You know, yep. I spend a lot of time doing this. Uh, so I always try to make sure like, hey, do you want to go on a walk, you know, around town? Yep. Like, let's get out of the house. Let's do something. Even small things. You know, a lot of people overthink it. You don't need to go to big, grandiose like re restaurants and stuff like you, know, yep. you just got to start small. And speaking of that, like, let's start breaking into your start as a indie comic creator. You know, like what was like your first like steps into, you know, writing a script or even just creating your first story? Oh, God. So first off, you cheeky, smooth little se segue <laughs> bastard. <laughs> um, so my actual my first time in just wanting to re write a script. And actually, this is the one we're going to be talking about. Um, I I got into it after reading and this is going to play into this book. I was reading a short story about a monster protecting a little girl from her dad. Um, and it was a Reddit story. And somebody said, man, I would love if somebody made a comic book about this. So I was like, you know what? I've been reading comics and doing podcasting and interviewing for about, <laughs> a le about I think it was going on, uh, so let's see, 2018 I, or 17, I started writing it. So a while, because I started mm -hmm. in 2011 doing po comic books and everything. And I'm like, you know what? I think this might be a really good practice run for me because I was big into Monsters Incorporated. I love Men in Black. Um, I love the um, controversial idea of like child kidnappings. And I'm, I'm not saying like I'm all supporting that. I just mean like <laughs> that's something that d isn't talked about a lot in uh, like in the comic book industry. Mm -hmm. and It's not talked about in the world. So I was like, you know what? I, I think this might be I think I'm definitely going to give it a try. Um, and I did. <laughs> you know, I, I live in Ohio. It's like one of the biggest capitals of like sex trafficking. Like mm -hmm. that, it's, it's it's heavy. So it's it's nice that you want to, you know, capture that and, and really, you know, put exposure on it. And speaking of Reddit, I used to listen to that stuff, like the compilation mixes where they would just talk about like Reddit threads. 
and like the, the the most insane like comments like dude reddit is a scary and dark place <laughs> dude it's like the the stuff that people uh talk about and admit like i think there's a reddit thread that's just about like people who were used to be retired spies and like mm -hmm. all this other cre and i love the creepypasta stuff too oh yeah um, yeah so all the horror element stuff is a lot of fun there and it, it it just it i think that that little that little story really got my feet wet into it and i think that's one of the things that people should realize is that inspiration can come from anywhere mm -hmm. um and if hey if you want to take a short story that you found on reddit and turn it into a comic sure now this isn't obviously a shot by shot of it actually that's not true the first four pages are but uh <laughs> disclaimer the, right the rest of it is all me um and also watching a lot of monsters incorporated and men in black so I do. I remember Men in Black watching it when right when it first came out, and I remember the alien dude. He had his ear pierced like all the way up, and I fought so hard with my mom. I wanted it so bad because it was so cool in the day. And like now, I thank her. Like I'm like, mom, thank you for for, for saving me from that. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I um I actually that uh, Men in Black actually struck my fear of centipedes because of the ending monster. Oh, yeah. That thing has way too many legs. <laughs> Dude, and like um, the, 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 what was it? The sugar water or whatever he kept gulping down? Sugar water, yep. Oh, yep. God, dude. <laughs> Vincent D'Onofrio is the, the guy who plays it. Dude, from, yes, Kingpin. Yeah, Kingpin, yep. Awesome, yeah. And, and a lot of people have no idea, dude. It sounds like me and you like really vibe on like movie stuff. Yep. No, I, I, I love that type of movie stuff. The skin hanging off of him and just all the creepy ways. And he, he had to pull it for, for, yeah, dude. Yep. You're like, hey, what's up, honey? Give me a kiss. <laughs> So, Blue Lullaby, a series of uh, child kidnappings, and this is a really interesting concept. You know, we see Winter and this monster under her bed, like, kind of become friends, right? Uh, that That's kind of the, the sense I was getting. Uh, yep. And this, this monster, like, helps her, and then they start investigating, like, all these kidnappings. Like, what, like, did you, like, so did you go directly off this Reddit thread? Like, what other, like, influences did you, you know, take from to kind of create this? Oh, God. Um, okay, so there's a lot. Uh, well, yeah, so besides that, which is obviously the first couple of pages, is almost a shot-by-shot shot of that short story. Just because when you look it up on Reddit, you can find it, and it's kind of interesting to read, and I encourage people to read it because it's really good. Um, one of the things I definitely pulled from, and I'm not ashamed to admit it, I've never played a Five Nights at Freddy's game. <laughs> um, but I've I pulled, never have either. You haven't? Oh, man, I see right there. Um, but I love the style of it. Um, I love the creepiness and the jagginess. So I pulled a lot from Five Nights at Freddy's. I pulled a lot from Buffy with Winter's character mm -hmm. and also Jodie Mills from Supernatural uh, because she has that very... Buffy, look, Buffy's great, but she's a badass, but she's not like hard-hitting badass, mm -hmm. you know? She's just what she can do badass. Jodie Mills will blow your head off for making for treating her vampire daughter... Uh, wrong and I like that um, so I pulled a lot from there too but I think blue blue was probably my favorite as you can see here um, I pulled originally from uh, Chucky from Chuck E. Cheese and I pulled from Five Nights at Freddy's with Bonnie mm -hmm. and I was like oh animatronics are really scary what do people really like? Well, Chuck that, is a rat. Dude, what's that Nick uh, Nicholas Cage movie where he has to clean? Uh, he has to clean this. Uh, it's like a, like a amusement uh, house or whatever. It's filled with all those robotic dudes, and they all come yep. to life and try to kill him. And he has to like he keeps drinking his energy drink. Uh, Wally I, Wonderland. Yes, dude. That's yeah. I like when you're explaining this. I'm kind of getting that visualization yep. in my head. Yeah. Have you ever seen the Banana Splits horror movie? I don't. See, I don't. I don't think so. All right, so he's like, actually, we were this close to being best friends, Cody. You're no, out. We could still be best friends. It's all good. I, you gotta watch this movie, and then we'll really be best friends. Um, that one is actually a uh, sc scrapped Five Nights at Freddy's script. Um, so, but the, Hanna Barbera said, "Cool, let's make a horror movie," even though they had <laughs> nothing to do with it. But Blue, when I originally had him, he was kind of like this almost this very um he stood on his hind legs he almost had like an elephant type head but also a combination of a rat and then my artist goes chad you want to make something cute but also very scary 
Um, what you're describing is horrifying and stupid. Let me show you something else. And then that's when we actually came up with the idea of blue, of almost a rat, which people don't like rats. I think they're adorable. Um, and people they're super all like smart, them. too. They are, they're very intelligent. And they don't have a way to control their bowels, so they poop randomly. Yeah, yeah. That's a thing you know now. Um, but also, no, I had rats. I had uh, two rats. I had one of them was called Science because I love Adventure Time too. Aww. <laughs> oh man, Kit would love you. That's his favorite show. Is uh, is uh, <laughs> Adventure. I um, have Bemo tattooed on me because I used to watch it with my kids all the time. Really? Like re that and regular show. Like I'm hip to it. What's up, fellow uh, skater kids? Yep. Uh, but no. So that was actually a lot of the stuff that I pulled from was uh, children's animatronics if you will mm -hmm. uh, but also like i said supernatural men in black and monster incorporated a lot um i tried to pull with blue with his more caring nature but in front of kids and his scary nature in front of adults was his relationship with boo um was he was very soft and cuddly and very playful with them but he will bite water noose's head off if he gets near them um, and I just really liked that way he was able to turn off and on the scariness factor. Obviously, the uh, men in black factor comes into safety blanket where it's mm -hmm. winter get, has this partner blue, which is the monster under her bed. And there's also other people as well who have partners in this in this world. OK, um, so yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. Mm -hmm. So like this Reddit story you pulled from, like was blue like 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 was that like someone's like, I guess, like story of them, like kind of like. What's the word I'm looking for? Like when they're experiencing trauma, they like block project. It out. Yeah, they, they 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 block it, like repress it, and like project like a friend in its stead. Do you think maybe that's like kind of like some sort of like how the story was driven? Like where do you think that story came from? You know, I don't know, but that's actually a very good theory on it. Um, but I think it might also be from knowing that your scariest fears can also be your greatest allies, and I like to think of that as well as that where Ooh, that story I like that derived too. from. Yeah. Um, so I really enjoy, uh, that's, that's probably where I thought it came from, or it could be, it, it could definitely be, uh, somebody's traumatic event. And that's like their way of saying, Hey, this is what I would love to happen. Mm -hmm. Um, because you know, when you, when you see these monsters, the immediate thing you think of is, Oh my God, it's going to kill kill me mm -hmm. and it's not going to give you an ice cream cone or a pretty flower <laughs> um so that's probably but i i do agree with you i think that would be really neat if it was projected um as like an actual trauma thing i mean terror i'm not saying oh cool you used your trauma for a story yeah 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 uh, because that's really sad but i think the inspirations definitely would be there no definitely definitely so with this all in mind, let's uh, let's let's get back kind of to the creative process. So sure. you said you started creating this script a couple years ago. How did it look when you first started like creating, uh, you know, the panels with your artists? Like, you know, what what barriers did you have to work through? You know, how was that journey for you? Like right at that stage? Who you know, that's the first time anybody's ever asked me that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I tried to do it differently, man. No, it's fair. I like that. I like that. It gets my brain thinking. When I started doing Blue Lullaby, I was originally in the habit of doing this four, this three panel layout mm -hmm. um, and this four panels, because that's what I noticed from a lot of like webtoons or a lot of like web comics and everything. So I was like, OK, I'll just do this. But then I started reading, do you know, like uh, Kevin Smith's Cacophony and yeah, yeah. Um, those. I started looking at the way other scripts broke down the comics and I also used a program. Oh shoot, it's escaping me. Um, but it was a it was a comics creating program that what it would do is it would say panel one, two, and three. But it would also give you like the way things could be angled. It would give okay. you different words for it. Um, but I just started kind of playing with the different layouts and everything. And actually, now that I'm I'm thinking about this more, Andrea was kind of the one who started getting more into the playfulness of these because i was originally just picturing these as all blocks mm -hmm. uh, but my artist was the one andrea was able to do like these nice little four, three panel rolls and these nice two big panels um so that's who that i guess i guess there wasn't as they're pretty much just trying to describe what angles is was probably the hardest part because you're like okay well this is going to be an over the shoulder shot well what type mm -hmm. of over the shoulder shot a zoomed in over a uh, shot do you want to like a wide angled over sh over the shoulder shot what do you want um but i kind of gave andrea more of 
hey, you can do whatever you think fits with it. And then she kind of made everything more linear and more easier to process because script writing, I know people think that that's the easiest process of it and that art's the hardest part. No, they're both equally hard. Yeah, because I mean, you got to make sense, right? You got to give your artist something to, to work with. You can't, you know, try to point them in the wrong direction. Like that's, that's, you know, that's when I interview people and they talk about having like film creating experience and stuff. Uh, and then they talk how they go into can you know, uh, creating comics. It almost goes hand in hand because like you're used to that, like yep. shooting that perception. We have a uh, Lauren Smith over in YouTube stopping in to say, Hey, Hey, love this book. So great. Chad and team did a phenomenal job with it. Did phenomenal with it. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, the preview pages I had a chance to take a look at look gorgeous. And we're actually going to be looking at issue number one, a little bit more in depth as well. Mm -hmm. Um, but before we do that, let's, uh, let, you know, learn a little bit more about this journey. So. You know, with uh, issue, you got four issues out already. Do you have plans for more issues after after that? I do, um, especially with the way Marcosia has been treating this book. After, if you're familiar with any of the Action Lab stuff, so I had a chance to read uh, the um, what was it, the uh, Bleeding Cool article, like how um, it was just really uh, a bad experience for everyone involved. Uh, they uh, transferred like ownership, it seemed like, and then no one knew what was going on. Um, but I would love for your kind of a feedback and, you know, take on that. Oh, yeah. So it's I can't really talk about too much because we are under a NDA mm -hmm. um, at the moment. But the whole experience kind of I originally and this actually does play into about rebooting the book or actually get, bringing back in more stories. Originally, with this project, when I started working with Action Lamb, I was very excited about it. Um, because I had buddies like Rom V, David Pepos, Raylan Grant, who were a part of it, um, Nicole and uh, Nicole uh, D'Andrea, uh, who was the editor on a lot of these stories and proofreader. Uh, they were all involved, so I submitted it in, and I I got in, and it was awesome. Um, but because of the way the book was treated, this was eventually going to be an abandoned project. Um, I was not planning on going forward with it, even though I do have two more arcs. Um, in mind, I, 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 but so yes, after the way Marcosi has been treating it after I regain the rights back, I have started writing the first, um, outline of the next arc of Blue Lullaby, which is actually going to more so explore the world of the other, um, uh, people who have the partners of the different monsters. I have one gr lady who's just this elderly grandma with a shotgun and she has a giant squid monster in a forest and that's her partner. So that one is going to be a lot more, I would say heavy hearted and heavy hitting um, mm -hmm. than this actual script. Like this one is like cake composed to the giant alcohol that I have of um, the next arc. So yes, there is going to be more of blue and winter. Um, no, I love it. I love actually, that. Actually, Blue's going to be in a upcoming project that I'm working on as well uh, with another artist who's actually his first time working with mm -hmm. um, me as a professional creator. No, but um, he's really great. He does a book called Tuck and Roll. It's a webtoon. Uh, you can actually read it free, and it's also on our website as well. Um, but I'm actually working on a project with him where Blue will be making sporadic appearances throughout it, and it's going to be fun. Yeah, so. and it's it seems like you have a lot of possibility with Blue, just like mm -hmm. how he's able to be created and like conjured up. Like, I, so you, I mean, with issue one, two, and three, and four, we're only going to be going over issues one. But can you give us maybe a small like synopsis of like kind of what happens without spoiling too much? Sure. So the first book, obviously, it's just kind of the buildup of um, Blue and Winter being introduced, and exactly what they do is where they protect children from harms. Uh, from harm of different uh, adults or just whoever is abusing them. And obviously it's in where Blue will just eat you, um, <laughs> which was a lot of fun creating because originally uh, Winter was only using Blue as a scare tactic. And then I went, you know, I'm going to do a Punisher route for this. Um, I'm just going to make her want him to devour people. Um, but the second issue, what it follows is once there, it's revealed that, hey, there's some ch kidnappings that are happen happening. Uh, go solve this at the local um, middle school. Mm -hmm. That is the second one where it is. Um, Blue and Winter are walking into the school and they're pretty much asking questions. And this is the second book follows Blue. Like he is the primary focus. 
Um, when I originally was creating this, I kind of did the boy and his dog trope mm -hmm. originally, but as I was playing it, Blue was supposed to be a big dumb animal. Um, <laughs> and I thought that wasn't really fun for him. So the second book actually p makes it so he's a detective too. So he's trying to figure out what, why is this, why, why is this happening? You know, what clues can I find? He's exploring the principal's office and you kind of pick up exactly what he is. And one of his tropes you learn of is he's a foreigner in, he's a fish out of water. Mm -hmm. He is in a world where he, when he speaks to you, he speaks very slowly. He speaks in broken English because he's a foreigner, but in his <laughs> world, he speaks totally normal and completely clear. And I thought that was a lot of fun with playing with Blue in this. Um, the third one follows um, the reveal of it's uh, Blue and Winter are asking questions of the kids. They know that there's something mm -hmm. up with the school, but exactly what is it? Um, and that one actually plays into showing that Winter and Blue are very sentimental characters. Um, yes. I mean, right here in this big giant one where Blue has his mouth open eating this dad. Um, yeah, they, they don't bat an eye to that. But when these kids are in danger, they're just like, no, we really need to do this. We mm -hmm. need to find out what happened um, and we will do whatever it takes. The fourth book is obviously the closing one. And I think that one shows of most is that Blue and Winter take their jobs very seriously because one of the things that I really liked about Winter is she is in the in this book everybody's like oh she's completely normal like she's very mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in the moment she's very, <laughs> she's very laser focused no she's also pretty much as insane as everybody else um because she can step out of line she is only human i um, love it <laughs> yeah and i thought i thought that was really cute to play with where blue and winter kind of change roles in the fourth mm -hmm. issue um blue is kind of like the sentimental type and then winter is more of the bullheaded no i'm going to shoot you um, we have a uh, real quick we have beach fruit over on youtube stopping in to say hi, hi as well guys anybody in the chat if you have a yeah. question at all for chad feel free to uh start asking away asking away yeah sorry about to interrupt no hello hello everybody <laughs> also hi lauren it's wonderful to hear from you again <laughs> um, no lauren's great she's she's a lovely human being uh if you want to pick her brain about nightcrawler she will talk your ear off oh <laughs> no so but yeah uh blue lullaby is just a really wonderful story mm -hmm. all right so i think with that being said let's go ahead and dive into issue one I th all right so we are here looking at the first cover give me a little bit of a breakdown for this inspiration uh what did did your artist for the interiors do the cover for you as well Yes. Um, so Andrea Montano is probably it was the one who did all the covers and all the artwork throughout the book. Mm -hmm. um, this inspiration, I I legitimately told her, bro, this is my first time when an artist says, "What do you want the cover to be like?" Um, you pick. <laughs> <laughs> what do you? I, <laughs> what did they say? Were they like, "Oh man, why you got to put me on the spot"? <laughs> No, uh, yes, they were like, no, you can't do that. You have to give me no creative control over this. No, so um, Andrea was actually really happy about that. Um, with the covers and also with the way um, how the artwork came, I sort of just gave her, I said, if anything, you have like a visual thing in mind, feel free to add it or even just ask me. Um, and then I will obviously say yes or no, but that also gives the artist room to play with um, the art instead of just having a fixed yeah you know, straightness of what the artist or the writer wants um, and so usually for, when they, usually when you let them have creative control there they're, they're they they do like a phenomenal job too right like they're able to just go wild with it very much so um it, yeah it just it gets them to play and i actually like that more for an artist instead of saying well that's the wrong angle bro i i don't know what the right angle was <laughs> yeah that looks awesome <laughs> <laughs> like you made it better uh, so yeah, no, but you, you are right. They, they definitely do. I, it definitely gives them more creative freedom. And I think that makes them more willing to work with you. If that mm -hmm. makes sense. All right. So let's go ahead. Let's start taking a look at, uh, so some of the first couple of pages. Sure. What do you want to know about that? Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, let, yeah, let's just go through them. So what, let, let's hold on, hold on. Well, well, before the house, uh, 
what was uh yeah this so this is a really interesting uh oh. is this like, like concept art or like a print or a variant cover so this was actually gonna be the original cover um and instead obviously instead of me saying no we sh can't include them we can throw them away mm -hmm. we just decided to use them as nice little page bre breaks i love it like this yeah. this looks really like sinister yeah no the um the colorized version is even scarier um i actually think i still have it but um this i actually like the black and white more mm -hmm. um, with this cover even though yeah the colored one is very uncomfortable and scary to look at i actually like this better because i'm a sucker for black and white <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to art so uh, but yeah, no, it, and actually each one of these issues have a, um, a, an alternative cover, mm -hmm. um, to them. The, I think the, there, the other three are not colored. I think the only one that was colored is this one. Um, I can't remember offhand cause it's been a moment since I've looked at what I have still. All right. So yeah, if you want to scroll down. Sure. So we're getting a look at the first kind of like true page of, of, of the book yep. uh so it's uh looking at the house what are we seeing happen uh like right here really this is just a setup this is actually a flashback scene um the original scene was done in more of a sepia tone oh no it is still done in that never mind <laughs> um the original <laughs> this one is actually a flashback where it introduces winter and her living condition which is um winter wanting to do, do, doesn't want to go to bed but the mom is saying no if your father comes you know something's gonna happen mm -hmm. um, and then obviously the next page is your first introduction to blue um blue the when i was originally introducing him she was gonna be scared of him um and this whole little se segment is blue is just looking at her as his next your person to scare Mm -hmm. um if you will but instead and for this actually talks onto the short story uh from reddit is she's not afraid of him she's afraid of what's coming up the stairs um and instead of saying oh my god a monster she's just like no you need to be quiet the real monster is coming um so she doesn't care about him it's like getting under the bed with pennywise look yeah, i know yeah. you eat children but i'm more afraid of that thing yeah <laughs> so for for you as a writer, you know, was it difficult writing like this type of material? You know, because uh, she's she's about to get uh, abused by her for her father, right? Yes. So did that much. like put you in any like dark spots or anything? What do you mean? Like 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 writing it, like writing material. Did it, I, I, was it hard for you at all? Yes. <laughs> no. No, it wasn't at all, Cody. No. It yes, it was actually. Um, there were times where I was just like, "Am I am I going too hard?" like i don't really like make putting this kid in this type of situation mm -hmm. um i don't like the fact that the next the next page is actually cuts to lily so this is the way i set this up was kind of like mirroring winter's situation with lilies um and obviously in reviews i d do notice that yes it's very confusing but you pro should probably pay more attention you know to um, be honest like the when you were explaining it like the way if the person if, if you uh if you scroll up to the top the way you uh paneled the first house it's like identical yep yeah it's yes. I, it's 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 identical uh yep. no i get that right away so uh th so that's been something that's kind of like you, you've seen it uh, in, in reviews and you and you're you just feel like maybe they should have paid a little bit more attention yeah but i i do understand where the confusion is coming from as well um, that's obviously something that I do take at heart with other projects going forward mm -hmm. is, hey, you know, what what section is confusing for these uh, reviewers or just also other people and also sending your scripts to um, other uh, people in the industry to have them kind of glance it over a little bit is also very helpful too to get rid of that confusion. But you can't win them all and that's okay. Yeah, yeah. It's your first um, book, right? Absolutely. Yeah, this was my first book. I had a lot to learn and I'm trust me, you never learn you never stop learning when it comes to writing comic books. Mm -hmm. Um and you never stop um I personally think you never start stop getting better and every script can be tweaked. Um there's nothing that you cannot change in a script. <laughs> if you're saying your script is perfect, I guarantee you there's probably something wrong. Usually uh, it's probably the people doing their first uh, their first script without drafting it a hundred times or saying that too, yep. right? This went through eight drafts um, before I actually was satisfied. 
Um, <laughs> but so this next the next panel here is obviously where Lily's under the bed now instead, and writing the dad as this drunk, sexually abusive thing. I can't really call them a person. Um, this this thing was really hard and really scary for me because I don't want any kids to have to go with this. Yeah, I, I, I never will ever want to put anybody in this type of situation. But obviously, the next thing is, no, Blue says, fuck you. <laughs> um, so uh, this is when you get the first introduction of Blue and he's hanging the woman, gr father out of his mouth. Um, originally with this scene, this was actually kind of fun. Uh, the first one is that Blue just bites his head off immediately. He doesn't say anything. Mm -hmm. um, and I found, I re as I was reading it, I go, well, wait a minute. Lily has no reason to trust you. <laughs> you just bit off this guy without <laughs> stating your case. Um, I, she's not going to cooperate with you. Mm -hmm. But So is Blue able to like change like his size? Yes. So I'm glad you have brought that up. Um, Blue is an interesting creature that I want to there uh, that is if you pay attention to when it comes to this book blue's abilities is size altercation obviously he's a giant rat rabbit so strength and teeth and all that um originally he spit acid but that's i scrapped that idea um <laughs> but he can only travel under things mm -hmm. so he can't show up if there's nothing he can't be under um and that's why he's able to alter his size is the bigger the object, the bigger he can be. The mm -hmm. smaller the object, the smaller he is. No, that makes sense. Um, yeah. So so, and, so uh, why put that like caveat in there to, to like, I guess, like nerf him like that? Uh, because Blue didn't have a weakness originally. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Um, when I was originally writing it, it, and as I was looking into it, especially with doing Monsters Incorporated and also Men in Black, as I was writing Blue... I realized that mon all monsters usually need to have a caveat. They need to have their Achilles heel, if you mm -hmm. will. Um, and obviously, Monsters Incorporated is if a human touches you, they think they can, you know, they'll, they'll melt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Men in Black is, well, aliens aren't really good at hiding. <laughs> um, and obviously, big giant lasers. But Blue, when I originally made him, he didn't have a weakness. Um, he was just, just this unstoppable killing machine, and I realized that when I was making the monster under their, their bed, I go, well, wait a minute. If the monster under his bed, under the bed, can only appear under the bed, why? And that's when I came up with the idea that he can only move, he can only move and appear under things. Okay. Um, that's also why Winter, I stretch, the, I stretch it a little bit, where Winter carries an umbrella, um, so he can travel outside so he can travel underneath her in her umbrella that's smart that's smart <laughs> so, i love it um, i love it dude you think you, you thought of like all like all the uh the the what ifs yep. you know so that's awesome yep. yeah yeah there was a one um that i did stretch the truth a little bit in the fourth issue and i kind of wish i could change it uh but it's it's fine and it's not really noticeable but it does spoil some things so i won't go into it um but yeah that's so that's why i put the the little weakness if you will mm -hmm. onto blue so we're seeing him just kind of go ham skis on uh, on on dad here so what, what what are we i guess what what do you want the reader to be feeling at this point in in the story you know the funny thing is, is i kind of want them to feel um rooting for blue um, I think that when it came to this type of thing, I wanted them to obviously fear that Blue's this big scary monster, but also very loving where Blue is saying the girl's screaming, you know, you're hurting the girl. Are you just playing you know, like that kind of stuff to really show that he's not this. I mean, yes, he's a big scary monster, but he's very loving as well. Mm -hmm. And you're kind of rooting for him to put her in, put him in his place, the dad. But I also wanted it to be where you don't really know what exactly he's going to do yeah um, and i think that's kind of the fun of it because i could just have made it to where yeah he just scares the crap out of him and says no um but does that mean make blue a good guy like is scaring a person to not do anything does, does that does that symbolize good but we can that's that's a whole other philosophy that's kind of what batman does right yeah well yeah but they all go and do it anyway <laughs> 
<laughs> like, yeah, but that doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Blue should just be yelling, I am vengeance. <laughs> I am the knight. It's, I'm like, yeah, and the clown killed eight people, dude. Like, Yeah, like, damn, Batman, come on. Yeah, White Knight covered this. You're not, you're kind of useless. Dude, so I've actually read uh, White Knight uh, uh, Beyond the Batman, uh, where they started doing the Beyond Batman, like, take on it, and I, I love it. I, it it's so good. It is so... I've, it is so good. I love it. I, <laughs> I, I, I recommend get, it. I gotta get, no, that's fine. I gotta get. Um, I've read the first White Knight. I gotta. I gotta start the second one because my buddy keeps kicking me to read it. Um, but I do. I love Bat. I love Terry McGinnis and Batman Beyond. So I'm definitely interested in. So that I should have read the first like Batman, like the White Knight, like because there are some questions I had. But mm -hmm. I think it does a good job of filling those. I think there's only three books, um, but it does a good job of like filling the answers. I think like Black Label has been some really good stuff lately. Oh man, Black Label, yes. <laughs> um, I really like Batman Damned. Um, I want to get their Human Target uh, series because I love Christopher Chance. Uh, I wish they would do more with him in his TV show. Mm -hmm. That's totally <laughs> different. Uh, but Last Night on Earth has been really good. And then, oh my God, uh, yes. It was so wild. Yes. Um, that's a, if you want to pull from any comics, I definitely recommend looking at that one and obviously White Knight mm -hmm. um, as Batman comics because there's some crazy stuff in that one. Oh my God. What the first issue where they like made Bruce believe it was like all like uh, the, the psychological, like he's in like a psychiatrist like office and like, yep. you know, the, the Joker's his doctor and all that. Like, dude, it's wild. It's wild because after a while, even when he's like unleashed onto the world and everything, it still feels like he's still in that mm -hmm. psychi psychiatric ward because there's a tornado speed force of just flashes melded together. <laughs> like, and that's like their suffering and mm -hmm. giant babies dragging corpses around from like Green Lantern rings. Dude, uh, like, did you ever get a chance to read any of the, uh, the, what is it, the Dark Knight Metal series? I did. I love that series so much. I thought the, the conclusion was kind of lackluster, though. That was my biggest complaint about it. I did like the fact that Plastic Man was like the awesome, the, like, yeah, yeah. the end all be all. I thought yeah. that was really funny. I loved all the weird Batmans that they brought in. My only criticism with that series is, why is it Batman? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like that was my that was like but why batman well because, well, because batman... He, you had to put his weakness against him you know batman is able to do anything with prep time but what if it's he, he's fighting another batman i mean yeah <laughs> <laughs> i get it yeah no that's that's a good point especially if they're like souped up versions of him because red death is probably my favorite dude out of all fuck of I, I i really love the doomsday one uh, the Doomsday one is cool too. He's a meathead. <laughs> when, when he fights Superman, he breathes the kryptonite breath on him. Then he fucking bear hugs him. I'm like, God damn, that was brutal. I also love Bryce, the uh, the gender bent uh, Aquaman version. The oh, drowned. the drown. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. The was that? Yeah, you're right. They, that where that was a uh, yeah, because it was a female. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. uh, the the merciless too. I actually have like the huge ass poster like right. There's my cloud Ooh. stand up, but like right there. That's yeah, I got sexy, this, dude. The, the, the Funko Pops, too. So I have the actual Batman Who Laughs, the Doomsday one, and then the Merciless, and then the Drown. The Merciless was badass, too. Dude, I've been trying to get Red Death and the Joker, the Batman Who Laughs. Uh, that storyline, too, is really good. The Batman Who Laughs. I, so I have the Teen Titans issue. What is it? 14 or 12? I, mm -hmm. I can't see. I, I have it. So I got that, and then I have the Metal issue number two. I think that was the other, like, self-proclaimed, like, first appearance of them. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, Dude, I just, it was, I, I can't think of anything more brutal than the Jokerized Batman with the Robins on a leash. I was like, God that damn. That was my favorite thing. Mm -hmm. I was like, that's hilarious. Please do more of this. Or King Shazam. Was, was same King wave Shazam? league. I think so, yeah. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> I love all, I like those. I thought that all of them were really goofy, but the the, bat, the Batman who laughs with those Robins, that was just so funny. Yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm like okay cool I'm totally in so what are we seeing right here now this looks like a really interesting scene too it looks like blue is getting ready for a little bit of a snack yes so with blue with this one is that Lily in this panel reveals that no her daddy my dad touches me and this is this wording is 
kind of a little bit i i wish i could address this up a little bit better made it harder but it's very str to the point um but which he realizes oh good lily has admitted exactly what's going on and now this is probably my favorite scene out of everything he does this multiple times um throughout the book make sure i try to do it at least every issue mm -hmm. except issue two but for other reasons on that um but and then chomp <laughs> um i originally this was not supposed to be the um actual scene with this um i had it where it was actually in full color and not this like black silhouetted shadow um i had it where you actually saw his jaw detached and like this horrifying disfigured thing well when andrea was drawing it she's like okay that's a little much and then she toned it down like this and obviously it it makes a way better impact when you see him all you know biting off the head mm -hmm. and it's all it's not it's not too much it's very and more impactful than seeing a big goofy detached monster yeah um, yeah if you want to see that you should read my other series that's coming out soon um Ooh. because that one is just five nights at freddy's um sort of <laughs> look i really like five nights at freddy's and bendy and the ink machine and those other horror comics doki doki literature club i pull a lot from in the next series <laughs> Um, anyway, so in this that, is that itself, that literature one, I what was it? There was like some weird like glitching stuff, like where it glitches, like it like yes. gets demonic looking. I, I forgot what I I was listening to some like down the rabbit hole thing about it. I don't think it was a down the rabbit hole, but it was something of that nature. That is Doki Doki Literature Club. Yes, is that when as you play it, reality reality mm -hmm. starts breaking um, around you, and it gets more and more scarier each time. Um, that is probably, and my wife will attest to this, This is that is the only horror game where I cannot play it by myself. <laughs> um, I have a problem with, I have a fear of Uncanny Valley. Okay. Um, especially with porcelain dolls and things that look way too realistic and they shouldn't be. Um, I have a fear of that, and that game will play on that a lot. Mm -hmm. We have uh, Ichthys over on YouTube stopping in and say, what is up, Total Excellence? Welcome to the chat, uh, Total Ichthys. How are you doing, man? Hello. How's it going? Um, Hello there. <laughs> um, so this <laughs> next one um, with this, this scene here is supposed to be where you kind of see Blue's caring, nurturing nature. Mm -hmm. And originally I was going to make Lily afraid of him, but she kind of processes. Uh, she's a little afraid of him right now, but she kind of understands that he's he's not a bad rat rabbit he's, yeah <laughs> he's good he's protecting her and unfortunately yeah she has to deal with the dad being dead and because blue really does literally say he's like is daddy gone where where is it is daddy dead oh yeah where he goes blue is daddy coming back no daddy no daddy no hurt lily daddy is he dead yes <laughs> and that's like that is his statement is mm -hmm. yes he's dead um and obviously she's upset and crying about that and then he gives her a nice little flower and that kind of tames her um i there this is the last appearance quote unquote of lily i do have other plans for her i just don't know if they're gonna make it in the in the next couple of stories mm -hmm. but she is she does have a couple of other things um and then he leaves like this little note about what happened um and it's just like a runaway note i i'll be totally honest with you some of the stuff that i did do is super cheesy um <laughs> so i just made it like the dad ran away because he was guilty mm -hmm. and in reality he was he was eaten by a big right <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah um and th that was only and i only did this because i didn't really have a way as i was writing my first script and you'll run into this a lot too as you go is some of the stuff you'll be like well okay well why why does he gone like what is his reason and you'll come up with like dumb things like mm -hmm. this and yeah it's done but it works for the time you know yeah yeah so, nothing wrong um, with that and then obviously this is the introduction of winter and originally with this design here um she wasn't meant to be uh 
like look like this. She was actually supposed to be. Do you remember the Buffy, the very the the first Buffy movie mm -hmm. where she's like a prep, like she's dressed in like white and she's more of like a prep. Um, I actually had her dressed like that instead of all black, and she was actually supposed to be a um, almost like a valley girl. Okay, and that's how she was supposed to talk. But instead, I realized I don't like writing stupid people. <laughs> Or I like I don't like I didn't want to write like that all the time where it's mm -hmm. like, well, like, did he get hurt or just make those type of valley girl cliches? So I just made her this very smart detective type character. Um, and she, she she starts saying, hey, um, is everything good? Everything went smooth. And this here kind of is just stuff. And I it's kind of ugh. These are actually just notes. Um, and this, I wish somebody would have asked me this, but I'm gonna tell people now. This was just stuff that I was writing down while I was writing this script. And originally this was gonna be more of like a worded calculated thing. Mm -hmm. And instead I just copy pasted my notes and I just put them in here. That's so <laughs> awesome. That's funny, dude. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, so it was just kind of like a goofy thing. And if anybody asks what these mean, they don't really mean anything, <laughs> um, except drink coffee. That was real. I did need coffee after that. Um, and then you kind of do the, like the little goofy victory type thing. Mm -hmm. um, and this form of blue was not, this was actually all Andrea because he was originally supposed to be standing um, right in front of her. He wasn't supposed to have this shadowy effect okay, um, or anything. So I actually really enjoyed this. Um, also, I know it's like, well, nothing happens. This is filler. Yes, this breakdown here is just me filling the page. <laughs> uh, nothing because wrong I with did that. It. What? I said nothing wrong with that, though. No, right? there's not. And that's a that's a tip, especially with new writers that they want to do a script. Don't be afraid to do stuff like this if you just want to break down the actions of characters and you just have nothing else to really put mm -hmm. in on that page. It's okay to give the book breathing room and just do little things like this. Uh, you don't need to Im compact it. That's what those, the weird, like, you know, slice of life segments are for with mangas or the point mm -hmm. one chapters. That's all those are there for is just making it, making the book breathe. So we uh, have a uh, calculus innator, uh, Vic Du, uh, saying hello. Sorry if I butchered that uh, pronunciation, but thank you for stopping by. We appreciate it as well. Hello. It is nice <laughs> to meet you. <laughs> um, oh so yeah, that was uh, one of the best. This that was this is just a page break to mm -hmm. me, um, but um, this was also so the then obviously you get the um, a villain type character here. Uh, this character does not appear in the remaining issues, and there's a reason for that. Is that it's actually for another arc I was doing. Um, that I'm currently he's he's in from an arc that I'm currently working on um, but originally the book was like, going to be abandoned so or was going to be abandoned but now he's not he's coming back um, and then you have the little which sets up the next that sets up the villain of this story um, and then obviously with this one it's you kind of get that they work at an office blue mm -hmm. pops up from the building and you actually never see him like this again oh yeah you don't see him like this again either this was just something fun that andre and i were doing i got gotcha. we wanted to see what kind of weird forms we could make him so is and blue able to like he he's able to like go to different like people's houses like when when they need help as long as he's able to go under stuff yes he can enter anywhere so um, like what i guess like is that is is that middle ground for him that that like is there a dimension that he enters like like he goes underneath the couch and he's able to pop in like you know kind of like how monster you know incorporated has the doors yes um actually that is explained in the third book okay all right um, you do get to see actually you kind of get to see how she transfer uh transports um into that world and you only get a brief um full page of what that world looks like in pa 
issue three and then at the end of issue four okay um and then but you will see them in the next arcs on exactly how they're they can travel but one of the ways that they travel is actually really fun in this book (laughs) Um, because it wasn't really originally supposed to happen until um i i wanted it i didn't want it to be like oh they open up a portal in the ground oh Mm -hmm. they open up a tree or just something silly (laughs) well it's not or something like cliche or dumb like that so instead i just went really silly um and then this actually shows the um their what you, I guess it was their um, district's mm-hmm. uh, uh, agent, which is Recluse. And he will eventually, in the next arc, uh, will get a full story of what he is. It's not really a spoiler, but if you cannot, can tell, he has dark eyes. And he gives them the, his cases. So it's not very hard to figure out that his name is Recluse. Mm-hmm. He has black eyes. If you can't figure out, he's a giant spider, which is the insp- which is you know the giant cockroach from Men in Black, in the meat suit. That's what he is. Oh, <laughs> dude, I love that like, too. <laughs> yeah, so it's not a spoiler or anything, but yeah, that's what he is. Uh, mm-hmm. Originally, he was supposed to be more saggy, um, and underneath uh, his robe or his suit. Um, I have the, I don't have, oh no, I don't have the designs yet, um, but he's actually either going to be sitting in a chair or he's going to have spider legs that are his chair. Okay. <laughs> so, but yeah, so this is the first issue. It's just a nice streamlined setup introduction to your characters. Um, when I was first writing this book, I, it's, it's okay if you want to just do a story or a first issue of introducing your characters like Mm -hmm. you don't have to give away the full plot until the end uh because sometimes when you're trying to put at least for me the when i write putting all of your plot and everything in the first issue or trying to make it more meaty than it really should be is really stressful and difficult for a lot of new writers especially with me at this time Mm -hmm. um so i just made it an introduction piece there's nothing I would say it's definitely crazy and it's it's definitely wild. Um, one podcast called it funny, <laughs> and I get it, like I do, but I would never call Blue Lullaby funny. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I did. I actually do have that as uh, one of the poll quotes: is that they do think it's creepy and funny, and I'm like, yeah, I'll I'll, I'll use that. I'll allow this. Sure. I'll allow it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's just the breakdown of Burlu Lullaby. Um, interestingly enough, with this script, this is not the original script. Mm-hmm. Um, originally, when um, when I launched this to action lab this entire first issue the first issue all the way to the fourth issue was an entirely different script um it wasn't until i got it back and i started rereading it you know as it was released by Mm -hmm. action lab i decided to make edits to it when i pitched it to marcosia no Um, i gotcha yeah so anything that you're seeing in here I have the original script and it's very dry. It's very bland. Um, <laughs> my buddy, uh, Kit, when he read it, he goes, Chad, do you know what contractions are? And I'm like, you mean like, don't? And I'm like, he's like, yeah. Um, your characters use, you, they say like, do not instead of don't. And they have no real personality. Um, he said the book was good, but he's like, you're writing. You need to make it more condensed like you don't mm-hmm. need to make it wordy um it's okay to have if your character talks with it uh, and this is actually in one of my other books that i'm currently working on if your character ta- is a southern character like from the south um it's okay to misspell words yeah yeah like you can do that and so this is not the original script when i first uh it was first released so if anybody's downloaded those books from the action lab um if they haven't been because it is done it's not on comiXology anymore but if you still have those in your library um pick this one up and then also read them side by side because they are pretty they're pretty different (laughs) we Um, have a calculus saying this is looking sick 
and all your characters were doing the data. <laughs> I don't know what doing the data means. Yeah, I calculus. Uh, you got you got me on that one too as well. Yeah, <laughs> I, look, bro, I'm like I'm 32. I don't talk. Of hey, I'm turning 33 in August. So are you? Let's dude, go. Happy birthday! Has your back been like really weird? The warranty has popped on my knees and my back. Yep. Uh, you know, it's it's all downhill. Uh, I eat like two slices of pizza before I go to bed. Wake up with an end of death. Yeah, can't I, you know 32 can't even use words now. That's how right. bad it's getting. <laughs> Nope. Dude, I'm the same way. Like, I'll get, like, heartburn sometimes. Where, and I can't, I can't, like, I can't stay up late either. Oh, so Star Trek uh, TNG data didn't use contractions. Oh. Okay, yeah. I actually don't know much about Star Trek. I'm, <laughs> I know I'm a Star Wars. Everybody junkie. get the pitchforks ready. Get the pitchforks I know. ready. Everybody kill me immediately. So. Actually. Oh, go ahead. I was just say, actually, if you want to kill me, great, because then I don't have to pay my car payment anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so with this, uh, taking the first look at the comic, let's go ahead. We're going to go back to just us. Sure. So with with that, you know, everything we looked at, what's next for you? You know, where are you going? I know you were talking about some other projects, some other ideas, you know, so where are we going to see you next in your creative journey? Sure. So um, I recently, and I do have to do the campaign for it, um, Lyrical is my superhero book that I'm currently working on. It was released in um, on Global Comics through Lucha, okay. and that one is currently on hold just due to finances because creating books is expensive. <laughs> um, but I have released the first issue, and it's doing pretty well. It follows the story of a man named Anthony Starr, and no... I had no idea that the guy Anthony Starr from The Boys, that was his name. The guy who plays Homelander. It was totally it was it was totally coincidental. Um, God, I need to zoom it, in on my eyes right there like mm. no, I'm just messing with you. I'm messing with you. I haven't seen a single episode of The Boys. So I mean, I had no idea who Anthony Stark was until or what his name was until you said it. What is wrong with you? <laughs> no, it's it's very good. If it is probably one of the best superhero shows you will watch right now. Um but if I I like creepy gory stuff and mm -hmm. I like uncomfortable and that one is Invincible's right up my baby, let's go. Oh, dude, have you watched Invincible? I know that's I I loved it. I, yeah, oh. yeah. Uh, so a lot of people watched it and they had things to say, but they I don't think they've read any of the issues. Like what's gonna come next? Oh yeah, no. Like everybody I've talked to people, they're like, well, it just seems like your typical like, w what if Superman was evil story? And I'm like bro no, no like dude gets raped in it like in later parts by well, like a by 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 like uh what was it uh, what what what's uh the race called that they're from his dad was uh oh uh uh, uh the the um the starts Vil, with the v. yeah the, like the veltrek the vel something like that so a female voltrex or whatever rapes uh is it mark i think it's mark yeah, right the, yeah, the like character. he gets raped in the comics by her because she wants to have a baby by him right I think so. Yeah, I'm. I'm currently. I'm on the first omnibus of it. Oh my god! It, I just ruined it. <laughs> no, no, no. It's fine. Trust me, dude. I have a habit of when I like read stuff about like different comics that are or TV shows that are based off of comics. I will accidentally spoil myself with stuff. <laughs> um, that's why when I read when I watched the show Sweet Tooth, and then I read Sweet Tooth. Um, yeah. I was not ready, <laughs> um, but no, Invincible is really good. If you everybody, I think should watch that show. Um, the Veltrex, not see that's gonna bother me now. It's gonna but, bother um, me too. Lyrical. Oh, okay, okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Calculus. It's uh the Viltramites. Viltramites. Okay. Viltramites. Yeah, that just sounds like a term. We were we but... were never gonna get that. No, we <laughs> like we're, we're gonna sit here looking like idiots, and they're gonna be like, guys. They're like they're like. It's this, you you fools! Actually, it's this, and they're gonna come at me with their dude comes in here. He's like, "You say my name right." You, I'm gonna kill you. Uh, but no, Anthony. <laughs> it's about the, that book is my uh, superhero book where I said I would never write a superhero book, and then I turned around and I wrote a superhero book. <laughs> um, and it follows Anthony Starr, a character whose abilities is from lyrical manifestation meaning when he listens to the song he's not listening to the music he's listening to the lyrics and he gains a superpower based on those lyrics there's a problem though 
the 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 right when the song ends the power immediately leaves when another song starts he gains the new power but he never knows what power he's gonna get he was like ben 10. he's so the inspiration for it was um do you know buzzkill by uh donny cates yeah I, I think so yeah okay that was i'm a big donny cates junkie and everybody can fight me on that um because i know people are like oh he's a hack he's not he's a beautiful writer a very nice man but anyway <laughs> um it was actually my inspiration for that was um i get i never even thought about ben 10 when writing it but that's actually a good comparison um but it's what it i'm was, here for i know you get all kinds of ideas for me um but it was uh buzzkill where it's a guy who any drug he takes he gains a superpower but the problem is that he also feels the effects of the drug. So okay, <laughs> um, we, yeah. we have calculus over uh, in YouTube saying he doesn't know what uh, Viltrumites are called. This is unacceptable. Boycott this book. It's canceled. Sorry. Oh no, I'm Can't. my book. No, I've lost <laughs> all of all millions of readers. Keep it a geekly. We're down the drain. My my uh, three con uh, my three consistent concurrent viewers. Bye. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> um, no i and the other inspiration was have you ever worked in a mall no but i've been to plenty okay so have you ever noticed or maybe you haven't but i worked in a mall for about six years they don't change the playlist of the actual mall oh i would lose it yeah um and it's very rare that a new song will start playing so i worked at a jewelry store uh Names Dale's. Mm -hmm. Don't shop there. But um, I was working there, and one of my coworkers and I, we were talking about comic books because I was writing Blue at the time um, while I was working there. And her and I were just spitballing dumb ideas. And I made a comment going, yeah, and you know what dumb thing I would love to do is I would love to shoot this freaking radio playing the same songs. And then that's when we kind of started talking about Anthony Starr with Lyrical. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was kind of fun because it made me and my wife gets really angry when I start writing the scripts because I will turn on trashy pop music <laughs> because that's what he's into. Mm -hmm. um, Did I you uh, see Doctor Strange uh, in the Multiverse of Madness? Yes. Like that that when he was fighting the evil Strange, I, that scene was so fucking awesome. Mm -hmm. I love that movie. It's so beautiful. <laughs> I don't think it's as good as um, Ant-Man. And I won't fight everybody on that. I feel like that's one of the best you know, I comic love, book movies. Yeah, I love Paul Rudd. He's so good. He's so um, good, dude. Ant-Man really is, is a, a blending of movie making and also comic books. Mm -hmm. I think that's the closest thing you'll ever be able to get to a comic book movie. Next to Shang-Chi, but that's a totally other different topic. Um, and then I have another one that I'm currently working on that... There's, it's going to have sporadic pages um, on my Twitter or I'm going to be showing previews of it on there. Mm -hmm. But, um, and that's only because it's currently being worked on and we're getting ready for a con in August. So we're kind of been Ooh. focusing on that. Mm -hmm. um, but it's called <sighs> Sparkle Dog. Don't say a woo. <laughs> Yeah, I love it. I don't. <laughs> it's it's actually a so one of my buddies, Kit Jaspering, who's done on my podcast called Shots with Comics. He is a full full time furry artist, and he travels to different conventions, different fur cons. Well, <laughs> me being his best friend or one of his best friends, um, we will sometimes go to furry conventions with him specifically the one that's right down the road from us and who, my, who let the dogs buddy, out you know what i'm saying shush <laughs> 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 no don't do that to me hey uh, uh we got calculus and ichthus in chat saying ooh woo <laughs> yeah and huge middle finger to all of you right here <laughs> um so when we went to this convention with him to help him sell his art work it's a it's a fun time um, it's like any comic book con or like any con you'll go to. If anybody wants to hear about Rainforest, go look up Internet Historian's video uh, because that's where this inspiration came from as well. 
it's disgusting it'll make you vomit um it's it's really uncomfortable to uh listen to but um we my buddy and i who's the artist on this one we had nothing better to do because we can't uh we can't really connect with furries except kit because he's a big comic book nerd Mm -hmm. and we decided to get drunk at the con and we started talking about furries and how it almost feels like we are in a cult and that's when we started writing sparkle dog like we started talking (laughs) about it and we were joking around and originally i wasn't gonna write it but as a joke i decided to write the first page of it and i sent it to my the artist blake uh, who's on it and he goes Chad, if you are really serious about writing writing this and me drawing it, we can do it. <laughs> and I've I'm already on the third script. <laughs> oh, we got Ickthus saying a very fluffy cult. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> They're, ugh. So now we call it our sweet little abomination. So a fun fact, uh a lot of people give juggalos hate, but I seen a picture of Violent J and he was wearing like a juggalo uh f- oh, yeah. f- fursuit because his daughter's into it. And I think that is that is the bee's knees, you know. They might not know about magnets, but they're good dads. Like, let's go. Hell yeah. No, and I think <laughs> I think it's good when they're when uh your kids support your or your parents support mm-hmm. your hobbies. Mm-hmm. Um, especially if it's safe. Yeah. Um the furries are creepy and weird and and unnerving sometimes but a lot of them are just regular people who want to dress as an animal in a fursuit and drink and i'm okay with that yeah yeah (laughs) yeah like why not let's speaking of drinking though let's uh give us a little bit of before we wrap things up give us a little bit of a breakdown of uh shots with comics you know what what's that about what do you do so it's usually right now it's every monday or tuesday um just because of our our schedules at the moment um, but what we do is that we're every Monday or Tuesday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, and it's me and Kit Jaspering, who works on a book called False Start and also does a porn book called Vampire Hunter Boyfriend. Uh, you can actually read that one free on our website, and you can also read False Start free on Global Comics. Um, and then there's an announcement, hopefully, of False Start coming out soon that I'm very excited about, but I can't talk about it just yet. Mm. I got to kick it in the butt with doing it <laughs> uh, but he's uh he's kind of he doesn't he's not very good at marketing and i'm better at talking than him mm-hmm. so i gotta tell him to do the thing we can talk about it off camera um but um what we do is that we it's us talking about the books that we're reading throughout the week um they can be from marvel independent manga um whatever i sometimes do webtoons um so what we do is that we get together and we each review three books and we drink (laughs) the thing is though is that the more we drink the more drunk we become yeah originally we were doing shots and shots with comics but because we were getting older and i like my brain cells uh we actually had to scrap that but now it's just us drinking multiple beers and then as we get drunk we start talking about we start off with good books and then we go to the books that we thought was worse i gotcha um and then those are usually more funnier and more um playful Mm -hmm. Uh, we do do review requests um we are on hold with it right now because we did get so many and we had to take a a a couple couple month hiatus um but we did do review requests and we should we should be soon doing it back up but we'll also review other creators um books mostly independent uh steven prince was his book was on it um who else was do- on it before um the guy who does the book decay yeah uh, right? stokes so yeah anthony stokes um his book was really funny and then there's another one about a werewolf that his problem isn't that he turns into a werewolf it's him just trying to live his life as a teenager mm-hmm. and that's his biggest problem and that I book's really good um, but we review other creators' books too, and it's just—it's really what we try to say. It is—it's is it's just a book club, mm-hmm. um, and it's just us talking about whatever we're reading. But we drink, um, and we usually go about one to two hours with it, and it's—it's a, it's a lot of fun. Um, you definitely learn about a lot of stuff about books and writing and and paneling and layouts. 
um and it's just it's just a, a fun thing and we get to discover new weird things so no, absolutely absolutely well that I, I love it guys be sure to check out uh check out our man chad what's your, what's your website again uh, let everyone know where they can find you at um my, our website is gonna be uh rolling squid and our twitter account is rsb swc and then my account is at casual nerd chad and i will be tweeting about all my other projects and also just drunk co- thoughts that i have sometimes uh, but those are our uh, social medias all right and real quick before we end off what is one piece of advice you'd give to anyone who is like just starting out as a comic creator writer artist or anything and they're just having trouble getting started with their idea what type of you know advice would you offer them to kind of push through that cody i can't give away my secrets Ah. (laughs) i can't do that no so the one thing that i like i will always tell people when it comes to writing a comic book on a serious side write your ending first Mm mm-hmm and that is advice that I have carried with me ever since Kit told me it uh, every time when I start a project. And the main reason is, is that, yes, writing that um, beginning is the easiest part. You open up with your character thing. Yeah. However, when all is said and done, you get you start with the middle. But what happens at the end? So ha- writing the ending first gives you a... Um, a point Mm -hmm. it gives you a end goal and what that does is obviously the ending can change and that's fine but at least you have a way to say okay my character is going to start off alive but the ending is they're going to be dead and that way you can say everything in the middle doesn't matter because you can just make up everything yeah and then the ending (laughs) is they die um and, and I think, and that's always been something that I've always told creators when it goes to giving, starting up into comic books. Mm-hmm. I think, I think that's, is, is awesome. I, I really like that. That's been a lot different than I'm used to hearing. So really? I really, yeah, yeah. Usually people just say, just do it. So it's, it's really cool that you offer that. I think that is a really unique piece of advice. Guys, thank this you. has been such an awesome interview. Uh, we do have to wrap things up. Chad, thank you so much for coming onto the show breaking things down, breaking down Blue Lullaby, what's next, and everything in between. Everyone watching, I appreciate all the oo-woos in chat. We had such a, a, a nice moment with uh, the furry talk. I loved it. <laughs> Who let the dogs out? Let's go, baby. But with that being said, it is time for us to officially end. I hope you guys have a fantastic Sunday night. But most importantly, guys, keep it geekly.